Uh, so I'm going to be showing a couple of things with the new uh, filter modes in Live 9.5. Um, and a new feature is a drive knob on these new, new filter modes, which is there. And what I'm going to use, first of all, is that to um, thicken up a bass sound. So I've got a bass sound there. Um, I've actually used it in parallel with a clean copy of the bass. So I've got these uh, auto filter running in parallel and it's got a little bit of an auto wah effect happening because I'm using the envelope as well. Uh, so I've got the drive knob turned all the way up. So if we hear this 100% wet, it's quite dirty, but if we mix it back in with the original bass, it just thickens it up a lot. So there it is wet and dry. And that'll help it sort of uh, cut through a mix or, um, you know, sound better in uh, tiny, you know, iPhone earbuds or that sort of thing like that. Um, and I've done the, actually done the same treatment with the drums as well. So I've got a drum track here. Whoop, hang on. I've got a drum track here. And uh, I've, I'm just using, so I'm not really using the uh, filter I'm just using the drive knob to, you know, dirty up the drums. And again, I'm doing it in parallel as well, so that we um, aren't completely destroying the, the rhythm of the drums, but we're getting a lot of thickness in there. So that's uh, wet and dry. So it's kind of subtle, but it really kind of um, makes a big difference uh, when you sort of mix everything all together. So uh, I've got the same treatment on a Whirly, which is uh, an electric, electric piano. So using the uh, electric instrument. Um, again, here it is uh, dry and wet. So I got more of a auto wire kind of effect in there. So, uh, so we mix it all together, we got this. Now, one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to record the uh, bass and uh, whirly together and uh, bring it into a simpler. Now, I've done it here, there, but I'm going, to, I'm going to do it here for you. So what I do is I get an audio track, which is taking its input from a group, right? And I'm going to record a little loop. Right. Okay, so here's my audio um, clip here. I'm uh, going to bring that down so that it's just a single loop uh, and crop it. And then I'm going to drag it into a simpler. So I've got a simpler I've prepared here. And there it is there. So that when we play this uh, simpler here, so there's our little group. Um, normally what I do is like maybe freeze and flatten, but you can't do that with groups, I don't believe. So this is just re-recording, so it's kind of resampling the, uh, the, the bass and the whirly together. And the reason why I've done that is I've got the simpler in monophonic mode, and I've turned the glide mode on with a sort of a short glide time. So what I can do is I can actually hold down multiple uh, notes at once. And I can sort of re-pitch it in real time. Um, that's in beats mode. I want to change that to complex pro. So we go. So you can sort of re-pitch it um, in a sort of a monophonic mode. So then what I've done in this next scene is I've got a MIDI clip which is modulating the pitch of that little group of instruments um, together and it comes up with slightly different variation. So for the second beat it's actually pitching it up an octave um, and then we can take that further with a different kind of um, variation. Uh, and because I did the bass and the whirly together, it's like all the pitched um, instruments are all being re-pitched at the same time, so you don't get any key clashes or anything like that.
Right. So, uh, and then uh, I've taken that and I've actually, what I like to do is sort of mix the original in with this variation and, and pan them slightly uh, left and right. So you, you, when you play the, uh, the re-pitch version with the original one, they're kind of like mixed in together. And you get this weird stereo effect for the time that it's um, been re-pitched. And then uh, I've also taken this um, variation and used it to create a build. And then I've taken the same piece again and just used it to create some stabs. So that's sort of all reusing the, the, the uh, same phrase over and over again for a whole bunch of different uh, purposes and made a little arrangement out of it. So that's all just coming out of the two parts there. That's right. A question I had which we might not know the answer to is what the drive is like based off. Is it, is it based off? The overdrive or I, saturator? I or think it's driving the filter. So yeah. overdriving the filter. Because the filters are kind of like analog modeled. They're made by the Cytomic guy. Mm. Uh, so if you, they, they will sort of drive naturally. Uh, something I didn't mention was that in the, um, in, the, in the drive here, I've put a utility afterwards to um, sort of do some gain correction, basically. So I can, uh, I've got a utility before and afterwards so that I can manage the drive because uh, when you push the drive up, you're going to get some gain as well. So you're going to end up with um, something that's sort of peaking too high. So yeah, after driving the filter up, you probably want to um, sort of put in some gain correction there by dropping it back a bit. 